I'm actually very excited to find out whether this works or not. Okay. According to food stylists, when you have melted cheese on top of a burger or on top of fries, for example, if we were at home, I mean, it would just be natural to put the cheese and the food on the microwave until the cheese is all melted and then you can eat it. When you're filming a TV commercial or just photographing a photo of cheesy fries, it's a lot different because when you put the food in the microwave, sometimes it gets soggy and sometimes if it's a burger, it goes flat. Essentially, food stylists have to come up with a way of only melting the cheese and not melting the rest of the food and according to some food blogs the best tool for this is a steamer so people use this to steam like clothes and curtains I guess I don't really know what people use this for I'm not not very familiar with any of this but we're gonna give it a try and see is this realistic does this actually work to melt the cheese and will it actually look better than just microwaving it Let's find out. I've never used a steamer before, but it comes with one of these. So I'm assuming this is going to be pretty intense. So can't wait for it. Here we've got two very similar plates of fries. So this one right here is going to be our home fries. So basically I'm just gonna put them in the microwave just the same way I would do it. Oh, I'm kind of messing this up. This is exactly like how I do it at home. Okay, so I've used exactly two slices of cheese So I'm gonna melt this one and then we're going to do the other one and just put them side by side So here we go fresh of the microwave. This was in the microwave for about one minute and a half I mean, it doesn't look great if this was a TV commercial um, Let's just say it wouldn't make it to the Super Bowl. Let's move on to the moment We've all been waiting for I mean the steamer is ready. I've got two slices of cheese, which is exactly the same amount. So one slice. I feel like one slice would be enough, but to be completely fair, I'm gonna do two slices as well. I fill this up with some steaming liquid. So this is not water, so it's gonna smell like roses and fresh laundry. <laughs> is this even hot? Oh, that's hot. <laughs> This is gonna take a million years. I think it's starting to work. This is truly one of the weirdest things I've ever done. Alright guys, so I think this is our final look and I mean if we look at like this one and the one that we put in the microwave, I think this one looks a lot nicer. It also looks very, very shiny because of all the steam. But weirdly, the plate isn't really wet or anything. It's actually dry, which is really strange. It definitely doesn't look like overly melted, but um, I think it's just enough that it looks appetizing. So I'm gonna say that this is definitely not only approved, but also very realistic. Like people probably actually use this in TV commercials. This next food commercial hack is actually my favorite one in this whole video mainly because it involves some marbles literally marbles oh my god I'm losing my marbles I always knew it was gonna happen. This is actually a food hack from the 60s. It actually originated from a Campbell soup advert. I'm not using Campbell soup because I couldn't find it, but this one was cheaper and available. So they were shooting a commercial for Campbell soup in the 60s when they realized that every time they pour the soup into the bowl, the nice stuff, like all the bits, it all sinks to the bottom, so they couldn't find a way to make all the meat and all the potatoes, all the vegetables, to sort of sit on top. Like, they wanted people to think that there's a lot more chunks and ingredients than there actually is. So using marbles, they found a way to fix it. So I'm very, very excited to try this. I think this one is going to work, because it's too weird and it's way too old not to work, but we're going to give it a try. Let me shake this a little little bit so this will be the regular soup so I'm just essentially going to pour it I'm assuming it's not going to be too chunky on top so let's see what happens I'm going to microwave it and I will show you the result in a second so this is kind of what the surface looks like I mean you can see some of the chunks it's actually not that bad this actually looks very appetizing so let's move on to the commercial one and this should be fun I'm gonna try not to be too loud my neighbors hate me. 
I'm gonna be using the same soup, so let's see if this makes it more appetizing or not. I mean, naturally, the chunks have to sit on top. Should we just pour the rest? Imagine if you go soup at a restaurant and then it arrives sounding like this. There you go, here's your soup. Oh, there's a marble here. Yeah, I feel like we need to remove this one. We are off to a great start because this actually looks so much fuller and nicer than before. I mean, I think I can see some marbles, which I should have probably fixed that. I still had so many chunks left that I didn't even use. I mean, the crazy thing is, is that it's a lie. So when we look at these photos, like these photos on the can, like this is all a lie. That looks exactly like that. Like that's probably what they still use to take these shots. This next one is one of those that I feel like we're starting to lose the plot. Like I don't actually think that this one will work or that it will look realistic, but basically we're going to be using some raspberries and also some lipstick. I've spoken about this before but basically working with fruit is extremely difficult so a lot of people have to use a lot of Photoshop to get the colors quite right and to make everything look vibrant. If it's not the right season sometimes raspberries have got this washed like whitish look to it. It almost looks like there's a powder on top of it. In order to fix that some food stylists use lipstick so they will put like red Red lipstick on top of the raspberries. It's supposed to make it look more vibrant and a lot more like appetizing so when you look at it you're like I want you in my stomach now. So we're gonna start with the before pie and I bought a lot of raspberries because I wasn't sure how many it actually takes to decorate this so we're gonna do the before one without any lipstick and then the next one, it's going to be a piece of art. And there we go. Wow, that took a lot of work. I'm not gonna change the lights. Everything's going to remain the same. I'm just gonna redo this whole thing, but with, with painted raspberries, I guess. I don't know if you guys were aware, but basically there are two different types of lipstick according to the lady at the store. So one of them is liquid, which is I think supposed to be more vibrant and just easier to use. And then the other one is just the regular lipstick. <gasps> Wow, I'm colorblind and I can see the difference. I guess on camera you can't really tell, but like it really works, it sticks to it perfectly. So this is gonna be a lot of work by the way. Oh, this is gonna be a lot more work than I signed up for. Let's see how much lipstick I've got. Oh my god, that's how much lipstick you get? This costs like over $10. This can't be real. What brand is this? Bo Bourgeois? I don't know, I don't speak French. I don't need to speak French to know that I've been scammed. The lipstick like increases the contrast on these, so I think this might work, but we're gonna put it together and then put both of them side by side. It looks really, really cool and vibrant and a lot different than the other the other raspberries, but obviously I'm also aware that I'm colorblind, so to me it just looks like more contrast. I don't I can't really comment too much on the color. Please let me know in the comment section. This will be interesting to find out. As people who see color, please do me that favor and let me know if he actually looks cooler. I'm not sure if you guys know what Scotch Guard spray is. I mean I didn't know what this was until I filmed this video but basically this is a spray that you put in surfaces like for example on your sofa or you can put this on your shoes as well and it basically prevents from water damage it creates like a layer like a waterproof layer on top of anything you spray with this I've never used it before I mean in theory this sounds great so I'm gonna say that this next one is actually very promising on episode one we actually used this trick where we used motor oil instead of pancake syrup and 
I can't remember exactly, I don't think it worked out perfectly, so I still really wanted to give this a try. If you put the syrup and it absorbs immediately, it sort of goes really dark on top. It looks weird, it's still appetizing, but maybe not for like a TV commercial. And I guess technically it should stop the syrup from being absorbed. So we're gonna start with simply just pouring um, the syrup on the pancake and there we go. It's not really absorbing into the pancakes. Maybe I shouldn't have used blueberry pancakes for this. It's been like three minutes and this syrup is not really absorbing into the pancakes. Maybe it was a really poor choice of pancakes and syrup. It says multi-purpose, including sofas, clothing, and also some handbags, but it doesn't say anything about pancakes. When I'm finally done with this series, I'm gonna need someone to come and disinfect my whole house. I'm probably also gonna need the Pope to come over and get rid of all the demons. I've waited a little bit for this to dry, but I mean, it still looks a little bit wet, but we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna pour the golden syrup and I'm gonna show you this side by side. Okay, I'm gonna try to do a similar amount. I mean, I can't really tell. Is it absorbing less? Does this actually work? Like, it just poured so beautifully in like every single angle. Look at the back. Like, how nice is that? That looks like literally like in a TV commercial. You know the drill by now, this next one is weird because we're gonna be using some pasta and also some incense sticks. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed when you're watching a food commercial for like a restaurant for example, all the foods seem like so steamy, like they just literally came off the kitchen and that must be incredibly difficult to make because that means someone has to be cooking foods every time the camera is recording, every time the camera is taking photos, which is kind of impossible. According to this hack, what they actually use to make the steam is some incense sticks. And I know we've tried something similar before, but it was with a tampon, which was weird and it didn't really work. It was just weird. I'm gonna pour the first pasta and then we're gonna light this up. Steam is incredibly difficult to capture on camera, so I'm gonna use this pillow as like a background to see if maybe we can see it a little bit better with the contrast. This might not work out, but I'm trying my best here to do the best videos for you guys. This is as steamy as it gets, so we're just going to pour it here. Well, that's not meant to be here. So there you go. This is kind of the steam, the natural steam coming from like a regular bowl of pasta. So obviously we're gonna need something small because you can't really see it from the front, from like the main camera. So, so I'm gonna break the sticks into smaller pieces so you can't really see it from the front. I'm actually very excited to find out whether this works or not. Okay. I mean, we're using like six sticks and I don't really know how I feel about it, whether maybe it's because of the dish. Okay, I really need to get rid of this because I do have a fire alarm, but like, I don't know. Oh, now it looks more realistic. If you move it around, Okay, that's a lot better. I need to put this out. Oh my god, my fire alarm is gonna go off. I already know. I think most of you guys know me by now and I'm a very positive person and I never get involved in any kind of drama. Anytime something negative sort of comes up, I just push it aside and I just always think that it's none of my business. But I'm gonna make an exception to type because I think it's also important for me to stand up for myself sometimes and that's exactly what I want to do. You guys probably didn't notice but I actually took a two-week break and that wasn't intended or planned and the reason why I did it was because I was getting a lot of negative comments and just hate in general on literally across all my social media because basically this other YouTuber, this guy who's got like 10 million subscribers, is like one of the most 
popular people on the platform, he made a video which it was essentially my thumbnail and my title and because this guy is so much more popular than me and he gets a lot more views than me, I think his viewers started attacking me because they felt like I was copying his videos, which is not true because in reality my videos were posted almost two weeks before, so you can literally check on my channel, on his channel, I'm gonna put like a screenshot that my videos actually came up first. And this is not something like I don't need to defend myself. You know, I think we all get inspired from other people. That's like a real thing. But I think there's like a line of like being inspired and being honest about it. Maybe it's just me, but I always think that if my YouTube channel just ended and if this isn't a part of my life anymore. I want to end things knowing that I've made right decisions, that I was a good person with good intentions in almost everything that I did. And I like to believe that sort of everyone follows or should follow these rules, so don't be a dick. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say about this. I just don't want people accusing me of not being original or not being creative because that's one of the few things I've got going on for me. I'm not the funniest YouTuber. I'm not the best looking. I literally don't have any friends, but the one thing I feel like I have is I've got a lot of ideas and just I hate when people take that away from me. I guess that's why I've just been so down, but I'm good now. I think I've managed to process this. I'm not one of the most popular YouTubers, so I understand that like a lot of people don't even know who I am. So I guess that makes sense that they would think that I'm the one copying someone. You can check all the receipts, you can check the dates of uploads, and you can check the thumbnails. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had so much fun. You guys know how much I love this. I can't believe I was, like, a week ago, I was thinking, I don't even want to do this anymore because I love them so much. I genuinely, like... These are my favorite videos I've ever done, like, because I have so much fun, like, doing research. I Skyped with a food stylist for some of the hacks, which was really, really fun. So, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe and switch my notifications on. I know it's such a like, annoying thing, but it truly does help me out, especially with this whole situation of people accusing me of, like, not having original content. It's just been, like, the weirdest thing to go through because that's the one thing I think I've always done right. Thank you to those who subscribe and who've got my notifications on. Honestly, right now, that means more to me than anything, so a huge thank you to those of you who are loyal to me. I feel like that's a lot of tea on the food industry, that's a lot of tea on the YouTube like th side of things. It's important that I show you guys that when something's not right and when people are saying things about you that you you just know that it's not true, then your voice might not be the biggest, but you do get a voice, so use it. I love you guys so much, and I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye.